So after all the hype and all the buzz, now AEW has their weekly television show, Dynamite. And we're now three episodes into it. Three episodes into it. And whereas the first episode, to me, provided at least a little glimmer of hope, of possibility, of potential, the last two episodes, unfortunately, have headed down a slightly different path that is not all that surprising to me. And as a result, I didn't like last week's show, and I really, really didn't like this week's show. I can't believe there are people talking about on social media that every week this show kicks ass, and every week it gets better, and this was week was the best. This was easily by far the most boring of the three weeks of shows. Have some damn standards here, people. And it's not just about spots and moves in the damn matches. It's not. It's not just about the in-ring work. And I know it seems kind of blasphemous or sacrilegious to say that a wrestling show has too much wrestling. <laughs> How stupid does that sound? Well, it can absolutely be true. If you are continuing to want to only primarily focus on your hardcore fan base that's not leaving anyways, then continue to do the crap that you're doing and be satisfied with trying to just stay afloat right around a million viewers. If you are trying to do bigger, better, and more, the crap that I've seen the last two weeks and in particular this week, that's got to be full stop and it's got to be full stop now. It's not the problem of having a wrestling-heavy presentation, even though that in and of itself does not lend itself to drawing in a massive amount of eyeballs to your product. What the problem is, is that when you are really only wrestling-based and you have nothing else, you have to have characters. And especially in the early episodes here, this is when you should be establishing characters more than establishing matches. You should be building storylines, not just having matches. And if you're going to say, well, you can go to YouTube and get, 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 no. The only correct answer in that place is no. It is not my job or anybody else's job as a fan to have to seek out why we should give a crap about these characters, why we should give a crap about a story, what this means or what that means. That is up to all elite wrestling to provide us that. That's their job. Not mine, not anybody else's. It's their damn job to make us care. Stop being so goddamn biased and stop being so willy-nilly sheepish about all this shit. It's pathetic. You're going to bash other companies for the crap that they do as they should, as they deserve. Then you need to crap on AEW when they do dumb stuff like this. This wrestling-heavy, wrestling-only focus is dumb. Like, again, third week in a row, you're starting off with a match. You have the Lucha Brothers attack SCU, Kazarian uh, and Daniels, at the very beginning. Okay, they don't have the freaking match. Instead, they attack Daniels to take him out. And here's Kazarian, and here comes Scorpio Sky out to make the save, and then you have the damn tag match anywhere where I see you win. It kind of invalidates the whole purpose of the Lucha Brothers attacking them at the very beginning. If you want to start off with kind of a shocking splash beginning, then have the Lucha Brothers take both of these dudes out, have Scorpio Sky come in too late to try and make the save, but not have the damn match. They can't answer the bell, the best friends win, the best friends advance. Do something different. Don't sit there and kind of half-ass into it and then still do a 10, 15-minute damn match anyways. And what happens, of course, as is so often the case with all these fucks in wrestling now, you get the big notable spots such as Scorpio Sky with the shoe. I'm kind of on board with if that's going to be your gimmick or your shtick, whenever you get pissed off or whenever you get mad or whenever you've had enough, throw the damn shoe the crowd really popped for that. Freaking build your match to that moment. 
Don't just make an A moment that is lost in the middle of all these other damn moves, and then when the shoe gets thrown back in, the ref goes out. What the hell are you doing? And then the whole thing with the finish. This was botched. It was bad. I don't give a crap about TV time or anything else. You can reset it and do it again. Because all you do is you make the best friends look stupid from eating that botched-ass finish, and SCU looks stupid because the most important spot of all, the damn finish, they screwed up! At least the next match, Santana and Ortiz versus who gives a crap. This was short, it was sweet, it was to the point. These guys got all their stuff in, they shine, which is exactly the way the hell it should be. And it was frankly my favorite match of the night. Because at least you were doing something to establish these guys. I still do not know deep down why I should really care about these guys. I haven't really gotten much about who these guys are. And you again, you're going to say, well, go here or go there. Not my job to do so. It is AEW's job to make me care. At least after this, you got the Chris Jericho promo over the big screen. And he's hyping up Santana and Ortiz, and he's issuing the challenge to the Young Bucks. Okay, something to mix up the monotony of the matches of this show. Perfect. Frankly, this should have opened the show, in my humble opinion. Have Santana and Ortiz go over quickly, and then Jericho, your freaking world champ! Since you're not going to actually have the world champ plug the damn world title match that he's in later on in the night, why the hell would you want to do that? At least have them plug something for down the road at the pay-per-view. Cool! But again, it's this match-heavy presentation of match and a match and a match and a match and a match. It's this ROH dumb stuff. You have to have other things to spice it up. You have to have other things to mix up the monotony of the wrestling. This is not an opinion. This is a fact. If you want to grow your audience... You must do different. You must do more. You must shake stuff up. Like this Cody Rhodes video package. Sure, ultimately, it's kind of self-serving because he's one of the EVPs of the company, what have you. But he is in a world title match against Jericho November 9th at Full Gear of the Pay-Per-View. So you devote several minutes of this incredibly well-produced video package. Having different people that are affiliated with him, his wife, DDP, MJF, talking about how much this means and how much this is consuming him and how badly he wants to become world champion. It's that type of stuff that gets you interested in a world title match, as opposed to other companies, one notably, they'll just kind of throw together a video package and say, well, here you go, we're just having the match. They're actually giving reasons and purpose and consequence for Cody Rhodes being in this match. That's how this should be done. It's kind of concerning, though, that when you have a world title match on the same night as this video package is running, you're focusing on the video package for the pay-per-view in a few weeks. Just saying. But at least you could say this was one of the highlights of the night because, again, it wasn't something that was match, 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 match. Like the AEW Women's Championship. I don't know why I'm supposed to care about Britt Baker, nor do I care about Britt Baker. I still don't know why I'm supposed to care about Rio, because I certainly do not. I don't think this match was particularly good, and I don't care about either one of the women. Again, that's not my ass. That's on AEW. Give us an interview beforehand. Give us video packages beforehand. Give us something beforehand. Give us a reason to care about any of them. Give us an explanation for why the hell this match is even happening to begin with. That's all I'm saying. A part of the feelings that I have right now about this week's show could potentially be due to the fact of this company waited until the third week to actually bother to have the Luchasaurus booked. And then, of course, now he's out due to injury, so he's not going to be able to wrestle in the tournament, which means that instead of it being Jungle Boy and the fucking Luchasaurus, a boy and his damn dinosaur, it's going to be... Marco Stunt and his dinosaur. Like, what the hell? So, yes, it bothers me. Yes, it pisses me off. It's not, I don't ask for much when it comes to wrestling. And God knows wrestling even under delivers to that expectation. But there is something like this. The freaking Luchasaurus, a 6 5 Mexican in a fucking Lucha mask, going around like a dinosaur doing tail whips. That is something I can get down with. That is a future superstar. And instead of the first few weeks of AEW... They haven't featured him. They haven't shown him. And you can take your dark stuff and blow it out your ass. Instead, you can take this match, Jurassic Express versus the Lucha Brothers, and blow it out your ass too. 
Marco Stun is like five foot, what, three, four hundred and five pounds. In no way, shape, or form should the Lucha Brothers be wrestling anything close to a competitive match with these guys. If you're going to have this match go long and through a commercial break, then it should be you're fully healing them out, not half-ass healing them out like you did here, and you're giving Jurassic Express really no hope whatsoever. Maybe one hope spot, one hope spot, and that is it! And it is just literally the Lucha Brothers toying with these dudes. Not having to do all the great things that the Lucha Brothers can do in terms of their moves, but just beating these jokers down, and in particular, Marco Stunt! Work it like a damn traditional tag match. Get a ton of heat and have Jungle Boy come in to try and at least make a save. If you're going to do a long tag match, at least do this. Not just a bunch of guys getting a bunch of fucking moves in. Because instead, what happens? Nobody believes in Marco Stun anyways. And now you believe a little less in the Lucha Brothers. They don't get over nearly as much as heels as they needed to be as it was designed to do. It was dumb. It was dumb. Perhaps, arguably, the best actual pure match of the night might have been Moxley and Pac versus Hangman Page and Kenny Omega. But even then, I look at this match and it's like, they really haven't done anything to tell me why I should care about Hangman Page. Moxley, Omega, I know they have a thing going on in terms of a program. I know Pac beat Omega. So, like, there's a little bit of that. There's some stuff that I know. The best thing about this match was Moxley turning on Pac and walking out. That was the best. That was the highlight. At least I could say that was something different. At least I could say that was an attempt to build a story. At least I could say that was an attempt to do something with characters. That is okay. But again, buried into this show, where there's so little breakup of the monotony of the matches, it just kind of all blends into the crowd. And then you get to the main event. Darby Allen versus Chris Jericho for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. For crying out loud, gentlemen, this is your first heavyweight world title match on your flagship television show. Build up to it! Video packages about one or both of these guys, especially Darby Allen, the 175-pound, weird, short, short, tight-looking emo motherfucker with pain all over his body. Tell us more about his story. Tell us about why we should give a crap. Why we should care about his big moment, his big spotlight, his big opportunity here. And you did nothing. Give us a reminder of the greatness, the awesomeness, and the magnificence of Chris Jericho. And instead, you did nothing. Build up and be bothered to even worry about the fact that you have a main event that is for your company's number one title. And instead, AEW largely did nothing. Is that all that surprising in a company run by a bunch of move marks that the details, the important things like this, were largely neglected? Because after all, we got to make sure we get Cody's video package in to hype up the world title match that happens in a few damn weeks at the pay-per-view, totally undercutting and forgetting about the match that happens tonight that, of course, if it doesn't involve anybody in the elite, it doesn't really matter. And that doesn't even speak to what happened in the freaking match. It's one thing of Chris Jericho is going to tie up Darby Allen's hands to beat him relentlessly as a heel should. But to tie him up and make it seem like Chris Jericho needed that advantage to actually beat him was ridiculous. And then of all things, to have Jake Hager come out, the guy that a couple weeks ago was your big reveal at the end in your damn main event, and the last two weeks you had him sitting there standing behind Chris Jericho not do shit, and then this week, he's coming out to run interference to help Chris Jericho beat Darby Allen. What the hell is wrong with this picture? And there's only one person that I blame for this shit. Chris Jericho. You're the champ. You're the biggest star. You're the heel. You are everything. Anything you signed off on on this match reflects poorly on you. You should know better. Stop with all this 50-50 booking bullshit. And stop on all this crap that does not elevate Darby Allen, And it only diminishes the world champion, the guy you don't want to diminish, that you want to build up. So that way when you build up other guys, that really fucking matters when they beat him. And Chris freaking Jericho! God damn, this show is stupid this week. Too much damn wrestling. Too few reasons to actually give a crap about the vast majority of these talents. And while all of these hardcore marks are circle jerking and beating off to all these matches... 
Just watch as the viewership continues to decline. And don't say I didn't try to warn you. And that's why you need OTR Essential. Not the wrestling show you want. Just the wrestling show you need. Because of crap like this. You should be building up characters. You should be telling stories. And you're not doing any of that. And if you did some of that, some of the great moves that some of these guys could do would matter a whole hell of a lot more. If all the matches are largely going to look the same, feel the same, and be presented the same with a bunch of people we don't know anything about and we don't give a crap about, then it's going to have no consequence or meaning whatsoever.